Hi, I'm Patty Page, cookie cutter designer and owner of Baked Ideas in New York City. The techniques I use for making a cookie cutter that I'm going to show you today are the same techniques I use to make all these cookie cutters. You absolutely don't have to be an expert at doing this. I'm going to show you how to trim metal for your cutter, shape and bend it with pliers, and tape it up to create a special custom cutter. So let's get started. Good Housekeeping TV. Genius ideas made easy. Hi, I'm Patty Page and I'm from Baked Ideas. I'm going to show you how to make some really cool special custom cookie cutters. So what you're going to need is what you see here. We're going to start with the aluminum strips and you can find these online. You can order them. You can go to a hardware store and find something called flashing, which people have used to make the cutters. Or you can find a metal smith who might cut you the pieces. One other really handy trick is to Find an old cookie cutter you have lying around the house and just cut it up, flatten it out. If you just want to try it out, that's a really good way to start. Then you're going to need a little bit of string, which is going to help you to figure out how much metal you're actually going to use to make each cutter. And of course, you're going to need pictures of what you're going to make your cutter of. So what I've chosen is a picture of my Jack Russell, whose name is actually Julia, and my neighbor's house. They have a beautiful Victorian home and we're going to make them a cutter to make cookies of their house. Then you're going to need your needle nose pliers to bend the metal and scissors to cut the metal when you're ready to finish it off and some tape to seal the metal. And then you're going to be ready to go. Let's get started. We're going to make two cookie cutters. One's a little more complicated and one's simpler. The reason the house is simpler is because it's got basically straight lines and geometric shapes. And then the dog, Julia, is kind of more complicated because she's got lots of ins and outs and her extra little foot takes a little work and so she's a little bit harder to make. So let's start with the house. First we're going to take some string and this is going to help you decide how much cookie cutter strip you're going to need to use. So we're just going to sort of generally go around the house with, this, with the string, figure out how much cookie cutter strip you're going to need so you don't waste a bunch. So I'm gonna, then I'm going to go a little bit more to make sure I have enough. And I'm going to use that distance. I'm going to cut it actually. And I'm going to use this piece of string to measure the aluminum and then just cut it with a regular old household scissor that you save for this occasion because you don't want to ruin a good scissor. And there you go. So this is the piece of cookie cutter strip we're going to use for the house. Just going to take my plier and make sure the end is flat. And then we're going to, I always start on a straightaway because you want to make sure you have enough room when you come around to the end to uh, seal the piece of metal. So we're going to basically just go around the shape of the picture. Whenever you get to where you're going to want to make a turn, you're just going to mark it with either a pencil or the tip of your plier. And wherever you made a mark, you're going to make a bend. And whenever I make a bend, I go like whack if it's a short, hard bend. Okay, so you made the first bend and now you're ready to make the second bend. I'm going to actually mark it with a pencil. It's a little easier. And then I've got my mark, so I'm gonna, again, it's a, it's a real you know, sharp turn, so I'm going to make a really sharp, quick turn with the metal. And now I'm going to open it back up so it follows the line of that little overhang of the roof. This is probably the most difficult part of this particular cutter because it's a tiny little piece. And I'm going to Bend it right there. Now I'm ready to do the roof and I always check back to make sure I'm uh, following the line and that nothing went off. So I'm going to make a little mark where I'm going to turn again. Put my pliers right against that mark and it's another sharp turn so you want to do it really firmly. So it's going pretty well. I'm going to look back again to see if I'm still 
If you make a turn that you don't like and you want to redo it, you can always open it up again. You have about maybe two chances to do that before the metal starts to weaken at that point. Okay, now we're at the top. You can see this is easy because they're just long straight lines and sharp turns. And again, checking back, that looks pretty good. I'm gonna open that up a little. Okay, and another sharp turn. This, now this is another little tricky part because you're just, a, the shorter spaces make it a little more difficult than the longer spaces, but still, this is really easy. Okay, another turn. You can sort of start to see the house coming together now. You can almost recognize it. Now I'm, I'm paying attention to the fact that this is not straight, it's kind of slanted, so I'm gonna make sure I catch that because the more details, every step of the way, the more details you get right, the better the end result's gonna be. That was just a really subtle little turn. And we got it. Now this is the other overhang, which is so it's gonna be a tiny little piece. As you get towards the end, you get in the position where the, the metal strip starts to encroach on the rest of the cutter. And so you have to sometimes move the metal out of the way of itself. But All right, we're on the home stretch on this one. So I'm just gonna look at it now, look at the whole thing, how it looks. And it looks so cool. It really looks like their house already. You could actually even give somebody the cutter itself because it does already symbolize their house. It would make a great present if they bought a new house or they were just painting their house. Um, just a really cool Christmas gift. You could drill a hole in the top and hang it as an ornament. And this one's looking really good. So what we're gonna do now is where the two strips of cutter overlap, I'm gonna mark it so that I can put it down and pick up some tape to glue it together. So I've got a mark where it fits perfectly and I'm going to now cut it. So this is where we're gonna join it together. So I'm gonna give myself about a half an inch of extra overhang there. So I've got my thumb where I'm gonna cut it. I'm just gonna Cut it right there. And then I'm gonna flatten out that piece of metal. So there's, yeah. I'm gonna put it where that line was. Check one more time just to be sure I really like it. And I do get a little piece of tape, enough to go around like maybe twice. And then I'm gonna make sure that the two sides are flush, are lined up perfectly. And I'm gonna tape it and make sure when I tape it that it goes over each edge. And the it, tape is great because I've actually washed these cutters over and over. The tape doesn't come off. You can always open them up and retape them if you ever feel like you wanna really scrub it. And it holds up for years. So I'm gonna give it another squeeze with the pliers. Make sure it's flat. The side of the cutter that you used against the picture is really the good side. Those have the best turns and um, really clean edges. The other side is a little more generalized because you weren't paying as much attention to it. Um, so you always know which is the side you're gonna work with because you take that cleaner side and use it when you cut the dough. So there. Perfect for cookies, perfect for a present. Came out good. So now we'll do Julia. Okay, Julia the Jack Russell Terrier. So let's see how much metal we're gonna use to make her. So I'll just generally go around her tail, 
her foot. You know, you can actually see that when I took her picture, <clears throat> you couldn't see her foot because it was buried in the grass, so we kind of drew her little foot on. Anyway, so go in at her face, out at her head, go around her ears. All right, this is going to be more than enough. So we'll cut it right here. And then take a piece of the aluminum. I think I'll yeah, start with a new piece. Measure it out with the string. Snip it with the scissors. And I always save these all the little pieces, of course, because you're sometimes going to want to make mini cutters. Um, I never throw any of it away. All right, so I'm going to flatten out the edge. And then, like I said, I always like to start on a straight area. So I'll either choose her back or her, her um, the bottom of her belly. You don't want to, because you don't want to start anywhere like on her head, because then you won't have enough space to, to tape it together in the end. So I'm going to use her back because it gives me lots of room to connect the two ends of the metal. And I'm going to, this is pretty straight, so I'm just going to wait till I get to where her tail is. And you know, you can actually make these cut, make a dog cutter of your own dog and make dog biscuits from it and feed your dog little dogs that look like your dog. So I'm going to mark it where I'm going to make a really small turn for her tail. I'm going to use the pliers, but it's not a big whack kind of sharp turn. It's just a very small, gentle turn. And uh, then I'm going to start to use my fingers now, because whenever you make a curve, you gently use your thumb and your, mostly your thumb on the inside of the curve until you get to where you need the pliers again. So there, I've got her tail all outlined, and I'm going to now mark where I'm going to make a pretty sharp turn to finish off her tail. So that's another one where I'm going to make a really nice, clean turn. And then I'm going to go to where her tail fits into her body. Like I said, this is the more intricate one, the one that takes a little more finessing and a little more time. I'm going to make that turn. And again, I'm using my thumb to make the curves, which is really actually very easy because the metal bends really nicely. It's firm, but it bends easily. And you just want to keep checking back to make sure everything else is lined up. Because if things aren't lined up, you really can't do too much at the end to, to correct it. So you want to keep checking. All right, now I'm getting her foot. And this is a small little spot. So you kind of got to get your fingers in there. And I'm still using just my fingers to make the curves. So I'm actually going to mark where I want to bend in on her foot. Even though it's not a sharp turn, I'm going to gently curve that in. I'm going to put it down and see if I've got it. Now I'm going to complete that curve and hope that it outlines her foot. Here's where it's a little problematic because the, this piece of the cutter is poking the back, but it doesn't matter. It'll go back into shape when you need it to. OK, so there's your foot. You have to keep picking the metal up because you can't always have it against the drawing because you've got to really bend and curve. So I'm using my thumb to get that little part of her leg that I don't know what it's called, but it's like a muscle. Now we'll go and get her belly. You have to remember to try to get all the subtle curves, like because in the end, it's the details that you get now that will make the cookie successful. So you want to make sure that where this curves, you're actually paying attention to that and, and making sure it, it translates to the cutter. OK, good. So I'm going to 
use my fingers to curve where her front legs are going to be. And now I'm going to mark where her front paw is, and I'm going to use the pliers to make that, even though it's not a sharp turn, it's a, it is a big turn. So I'm keep checking back, and that's lined up pretty well. You don't worry if you don't have it exactly on the line, because when you draw your, when you ice your cookie, you'll, you'll deal with that. Okay. So if you don't want to go to the trouble of actually outlining these two paws, you could just go around the two and then do it when you decorate the cookie. But I like to try to get every nook and cranny because that's what makes the cookie cutter like extra special. So we're going to try to get those two feet. Now you're in a really tight spot, so just keep bending. Don't be afraid to bend the strips. You just kind of take control of the cookie cutter strips because they really will do what you want them to do. Okay, we're gonna make a pretty sharp, a nice sharp bend here. So like it's another like, I don't know why I always say whack, but that's, that's what I feel like when I'm doing. Okay. <clears throat> All right, now we're going to get her front, the other front foot. Okay, so I think I've gone a little too far. So let me show you what I mean by when you make a mistake. You can open, the, I don't like that bend I made, so I'm opening it up. And if I did that like five times, the strips would break, but you can totally do it a couple of times because I made it too deep. So I'm going to make it a little less deep. And that's another whack one. And then I'm going to bend her other little foot. Okay. I'm going to try to get that little curve of her foot, but I'm not going to worry too much about that because it's a tight spot. I'm going to use my pliers to get this a little closer together. I'm going to go under her neck. You're in all the tightest spots right now, so you just have to have patience. You can go back if things are starting to go off. At this point, you can still go back and, and move things around a little. Okay, so this, now, this is where a head's going to come in. And I actually decided to include the scarf because we always like to put scarves around Julia's neck, so my daughter would always put bandanas and all kinds of things. So we're going to keep it. So when we get to that spot, I'm going to actually include the bump of her scarf, but you don't have to. If you don't want to deal with that, you could just make a straight line over there, but we'll get there. Okay, so now we're going where her mouth is. And again, if you wanted to skip the open mouth, you could just go like that, but I'm going to try to see if we can get it. Okay, I'm going to mark where her mouth is open. really, really tiny spots. So when you get there, you're actually just going to want to use the tip of the pliers because if you go all the way in, you're going to make too big of a space. So I'm just using the tiny little tip and I'm going to get it from both sides. Now I'm going to mark the, the inside of her mouth. Julia, we love you. That's why we're working so hard on your cutter. <laughs> okay, so now we've got gonna do her nose. I'm just using my finger because I want to have it want to have a little, you know, softness to it, not be so harsh. And close the mouth a little bit. And yep, yeah, it's still lining up, so. I'll just mark where I'm gonna, the top of her head's gonna go. 
but I'm gonna make a gentle curve here, not one of those harsh ones. And you can see again how the better side of the cutter, the side you're gonna use, has the more articulate lines where here it's a little more generalized. Okay. Well, now we're ready for, we're on the home stretch, we're ready for her ears. So I'm making the curve around her head, which is very easy, just using your thumb. And then there's the first ear I'm going to mark. And that will be a sharp turn because the way that ear fits into her head is pretty, pretty sharp. I'm going to... And again, this is another spot where you could just like, if you didn't want to deal with that V there, you could just go straight across, but it's, I think it's more fun to try and get those spaces. So this is the top of her ear. Then we're gonna to try to make that little curve there. Like every detail is actually really meaningful. But if you don't get a detail, you don't worry because you can always make it happen when you use your icing. Okay, now for the, the front, that was the back ear. Now for the front ear. other ear. Now I now I'm getting to that problem again where the your cutter is in the way of itself, but don't worry, you can just push it out of the way and, and it'll come back. So like I said, I'm gonna include um, the scarf just for fun and plus it will add color. You know, it'll, it'll look pretty with the brown and white of the dog. So that looks perfect. Okay, we'll just mark where the scarf well, this pencil, the scarf bump is. Just make, I'm not gonna worry too much about the exact shape of that. I'm just gonna make a bump there because it's just a scarf. Just gonna make sure it ends soon enough. Yep. Okay. All right, now we're on the back, which is a straightaway, so that's easy. Okay, so I'm just gonna generally cut it down so I can fiddle with it. So I see I'm not gonna need all that extra stuff, so I'm gonna cut that away so it's easier for me to work. So I'm gonna now just push it into place. This needs to go up a little. Just keep holding it up to the picture and get it as best you can to trace the, the drawing you have or the picture. Okay, I think that looks good. Better to do it now than after you've taped it together. I'm gonna make her head a little smaller. But Jack Russells have big heads, so there you go. So now I'm going to mark again where we're gonna put the strips together so I can let go. Yep. Take a piece of tape. Find your mark again. Make sure it's flat, both sides together. And Firmly wrap that tape around. We'll actually use two pieces because you want to get both ends. And the tape is nice and thin so it won't interfere with the cutter. I'm gonna take the pliers again and 
really squeeze to flatten out where the strips overlap. Now I'm just gonna hold it back down to the picture and see if I wanna fiddle with it at all. I'm gonna try to make her head a little narrower up here. So there she is, she looks just like Julia. She looks happy and great. Okay, so now we've got our cookie cutters finished. We've got the house cutter, the more simpler, you know, more geometric shape. And then our little Jack Russell cutter, which is a little Julia, and it's a little more intricate and harder to make, but it's gonna make a great cookie. So let's make the cookies. We've got some dough here that's been refrigerated, and I'm gonna take some out. We'll start with a, a small piece. We're gonna put some flour down on the board so the dough doesn't stick, spread it out a little bit. And don't worry about the extra flour, this dough can handle quite a bit of flour. So I'm gonna get it down on the board and we're gonna roll it out. I use these, these uh, bands on the end of my rolling pin just because it helps you keep from rolling the dough out too thin. And it's nice, you don't have to worry about rolling, you just concentrate on the size of your piece and uh, all your cookies will be the same thickness. Okay, if it starts to stick a little, just sprinkle a little more on top. And you don't have to worry also if the dough gets a little crackly because you're gonna be painting, icing these cookies. I paint the icing on. You're gonna be icing these cookies. So if there are a few little cracks in the dough, it won't, it won't matter. So that feels good. It's just the even all along. So we're gonna cut out. Let's cut the house first. We'll do like, we'll make about three of each cookie. So I press evenly on the top of the cutter and then we'll see, sometimes the piece comes up in the cutter and sometimes it doesn't. If it doesn't, we'll just pick it up with a spatula. So I'm gonna cut three houses and we'll get them up. Right? So I sometimes take my hand and just slide the cookie off the spatula and we'll get the last one. Just wanna make sure it's not sticking to the board. Okay, so we've got three houses and I'm just gonna go under here and make sure it's not sticking so we can cut the dog. I'm gonna give it a little extra roll. Again, make sure it's not sticking. And we'll do Julia. Now she, you might want to take a little flour and dip her smaller pieces in the flour because those can tend to get stuck in the dough. So again, I'm gonna press evenly on her and see sometimes that you're lucky and they just come right out with the cutter. And then you just take it over to the sheet and gently poke it out and then you get to keep the exact right shape. I'm gonna do that again because that worked out well. Cut her and make sure you press everywhere in case your cutter isn't perfectly flat. That way you make sure you're cutting her out totally. Yep, she came out again. Just gently poke the tail and the feet and the ears so they don't break off. And we'll do it one more time. Okay, so that's three of each cookie. And if we wanted to make some more, we could just, you know, roll up the scraps. Again, don't worry about the flour because this dough, you can roll it a couple of times and it'll still be great. These cookies are ready for the oven and then I'm gonna keep rolling. Yep, they look great. They look all nice and crispy, just how I like them. And then I've decorated some, so let me show you how much they actually turned out to look like the actual picture. This is Julia, 
And she looks just like her little happy self. And the house came out great. I think my neighbors are going to love it. Looks just like the house. If you make your own cookie cutter, you don't have to be limited by the cutters you find in the store. You can make something really special. So get creative and have fun making yours.